this is on the side of the road so uh you're probably gonna hear some cars but it reads Sekayum. Okay, I want to start by correcting myself and saying that it's pronounced Sekayum. You have to remember that I literally found this roadside historical marker out of nowhere. It was just a random, you know, marker on the side of the road that I saw as I was coming home. So I wasn't even planning on filming a video. No time for research or anything, so I just wanted to clear that up. And if you're wondering, I found the correct pronunciation on a website, BusirisHistoricalSociety.org. I'll link that in the description below. On the banks of the Olentangy River, at the bend where the stream turns southwest, is the legendary site of Sakayam. This 17th century village was located on the portage to the Sandusky River and was recognized by the Indians as a neutral ground for tribal councils where claims to hunting territories could be peacefully settled and goods could be traded. In the early 20th century, the site was an amusement park on the Interurban inter, inter Electric Railway. Huh. It's really neat. Looks like Ohio Historical Marker 4-17 there. Check out the other side of the marker. Which reads the same thing. But yeah, this is just right outside of uh, Gallingen, Ohio. Uh, I'm coming home from Mansfield, Ohio, and uh, I passed it. I was uh, traveling down. I was traveling down the road this way, and I just passed it, and I uh, turned around down that way, and uh, here we are. So it's this Olentangy battle fought in this locality against the Indians by Crawford's retreating army, June sixth. 1782 this monument was erected september 17 1896 crawford county historical society very old this monument was erected in 1896 so very very old so on the side there does appear to be some names and on the other side there seems to be a stone marking i'm trying to avoid showing my shadow but uh yeah Really interesting. Indian War, right there. Indian War, U.S. veteran. So according to that sign, there's a lot of uh, really interesting history that has happened in this field out there. So after looking more into the BusirisHistoricalSociety.org, I found out some pretty, you know, interesting facts about this site. For example, and once again this is from the BusirisHistoricalSociety.org, the amusement park that I mentioned earlier that was previously on this site, the grand opening for that was in August 1899. This amusement park was so popular at the time, according to the website, it drew in mammoth crowds, especially on Sundays and holidays, when they would future concerts. A sizable casino was also constructed to host traveling vaudeville and dramatic programs. And if you're like me and you're wondering what vaudeville means, I actually looked it up and it makes sense. Vaudeville is a type of entertainment popular chiefly in the U.S. in the early 20th century, featuring a mixture of specialty acts such as burlesque, comedy, and song and dance. So yeah, they had a lot of pretty fun activities. They had a casino, they had music, they had comedy. You could dance in the park pavilion. They had food and refreshments that were served on the grounds at the park restaurant. They even had a baseball diamond put in. And if that's not enough, you could actually rent a rowboat to paddle 
on the man-made lagoon near the Olentangy River at the back of the property. For added thrills, one of the largest swimming pools in the Midwest was built alongside the dance pavilion and a midway full of rides and concessions materialized in the shadow of the Pippin roller coaster. In fact, before 1971, if you drove down Route 19, which is the road that we're on now, in Crawford County, Ohio, chances are you would have saw the remnants of the roller coaster towering off the highway. In 1925, Sakayan Park was sold to Ralph Jolly for $10. He operated the park through its golden years and the park was actually thriving. The park had everything an amusement park could ask for. A roller coaster, a pool. Very important to note that that pool was a 660,000 gallon swimming pool. They had a bandstand, dance halls, arcades, and did I mention that they had giraffe rides? Yes, they had giraffe rides. But the music... The music never stopped. The dance music kept playing, some nights only on a machine. That is until June of 1948 when a lightning strike set fire to the park. With over $100,000 in damages and no insurance, Sakayan Park shut down for good. And now, it's just a memory. But something that I noticed is uh, the word Indians on this monument. So, the way cancel culture is going right now, and I don't agree with any of it. I don't think they should be taking statues down. And I definitely don't think they should be putting statues up of individuals that don't deserve a statue. So I think it is very important to stop and, you know, look at history. Because the way cancel culture is going, you never know when it'll be gone forever. I mean, we're to the point in this world where episodes of Spongebob is getting canceled. There's, look it up. There's actually episodes of Spongebob that have been canceled. Ridiculous, I know. But the reason why I say that maybe someday this piece of history will be erased is because it represents the Indian War. At the time of recording this video, the baseball team, the Cleveland Indians, Okay, so I want to start by saying that at the time of making this video back in September of 2021, the Cleveland Indians were still called the Cleveland Indians. They were just considering the name change. And at the time of editing this video, March 2022, they did change the name to, you guessed it, the Cleveland Guardians. And I know what a lot of snowflakes are going to think. They're going to think, well, how does a baseball name affect you? Does it hurt you that they change their name? And honestly, it doesn't. It's just the fact that cancel culture is so ridiculous. I don't even know why it's a thing. Years and years ago, I listen, I was born in 1996. And you, you never heard about this stuff happening even back before I was born. So the woke culture nowadays, they want to try to take everything out, history included. And they want to literally like erase the past. And I don't get that. For example, they're tearing down all these statues. They tore down a Cherokee Indian statue. They've tore down Robert E. Lee statues. Dukes of Hazard, a show that I used to grow up watching and that I loved as a kid. Well, for those that don't know, and if you don't know, then you're probably against what I want to say anyways. They drove around in a vehicle that was called the General Lee. And on the top roof of the vehicle, it had the Confederate flag. And yes, the vehicle was named after Robert E. Lee. Well, anyways, Dukes of Hazzard aired from 1979 to 1985 on CBS. Later on, it did have a 2005 future film, which, surprisingly enough, it did have the Confederate flag on the roof of the General Lee. I guess it's not too surprising, because back in 2005, cancel culture wasn't a thing. Anyways, in 2005, TV Land announced it would pull reruns of the series from its lineup, pretty much due to people being offended by the flag. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, is that cancel culture and canceling history is ridiculous and stupid. So, since they're pulling these statues of Robert E. Lee, Stonewall Jackson, Cherokee Indians, does that mean they're not going to teach this stuff in schools now? Like, is it not going to be in history books anymore? The school system is already screwed. From what I've heard, and I've heard half and half that some schools do and some schools don't, I've heard that some schools are not allowing children to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, that they don't even say the Pledge of Allegiance at all. And I recall growing up as a kid, being in school, standing up every morning and saying the Pledge of Allegiance, being able to stand up and say it. 
and now it's not being taught or said in schools. In fact, I just found a very recent news article based on a very close school district. Pretty much on April 11th, the Hilliard Board of Education is expected to vote on a policy change that would require time to be set aside daily for a voluntary recital of the Pledge of Allegiance and for the display of a U.S. flag in each classroom. So basically, these idiots are going to come together and try to vote on whether they should or should not recite the Pledge of Allegiance every morning, or whether or not they should display the American flag or not. I just don't see why this needs a vote. I think it should be mandatory, and if a child does not want to say it, then step out of the classroom. And then after the students that wanted to say it, say it then come back in. Listen, I know this was a long rant. I'm just speaking my true feelings. So let's hop back on the track of where I was talking about the Cleveland Indians. Or should I say the Cleveland Guardians for the ones that are easily offended. Because that is what they are called now and they've been called for years and decades and decades. They are changing their names next year I believe it is. They're changing their name to the Cleveland Guardians because the name Indians is offensive I guess. So yeah it's just ridiculous. It really is the whole cancel culture thing. I don't believe in it. What are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up if you have not already. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.